Yeah. 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 Yeah
And I visited again with uh, Miss Miss Houston, who lives on Ziegler. Is there any, any new development regarding that property? No, sir. Uh, she was she was saying that it, it that the tree growing around it was impeding her property. Are you looking at it? I did. did. Oh, you did. I sent you pictures. Okay. It's not it's not impeding her property. No, sir. <laughs> I, I'll mention just briefly. I did, uh, on. And, and I know um, y'all are following up on a few things that I sent over. Um, but I do, um, I did get a call just before coming from a woman um, whose house is scheduled for demolition. Now she's moved out of it. But it was her primary residence, and, but it is in pretty bad shape. So I referred her to call y'all today to see if they could figure out because she's only recently not living there though the house is it is pretty bad so um she wants a little bit more time to see how she can figure out how to get some some funding to make it possible for her to move back in you remember the address um i do but i'll tell you i'll, okay. I'll send it to you okay any other questions for mr green they need to get the pictures sometime and maybe, maybe by tomorrow the picture that we have the tree. The tree. So see. Right, I will. Okay. Yeah, just uh, email them to me or something. Okay. Okay, thank you. Is there any other questions? If not, thank you, Mr. Green. We'll visit with you later in the meeting. Okay. Um, I'm sure everybody received their uh, revenue collection and security bond ref, uh, report forward to report on on Friday. I received mine from the uh, I'm looking at public hearing. Is this is this another one, Mr. Crawford? This is a new one, Mr. Chairman. This is to receive it and petition and to hear any objections to the proposed issuance of the City of Shreveport, State of Louisiana, of its water and sewer revenue bonds in the amount not to exceed one hundred and twenty million dollars as required by RS thirty nine colon ten twenty two. Okay, so tomorrow you'll be prepared to make a presentation. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have no request to speak regarding items on the agenda, so we'll go down to our um, and legislation uh, and consent legislations. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, on the public hearing, this is something that you, you uh, the council, have already been made aware of. It's just we got to do a public hearing. That's part of the process. Oh, this that project we talked about? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I wanted to make that clear. I didn't. I, didn't. Mm -hmm. I kept hearing you saying, is this something new? It's, it's not something new. It's part of the process of what you've already been made aware of. Yeah, I, I, when I said that, Mayor Maddie misspoke, I was thinking that we had a public hearing in the last meeting, and, okay. and I, I didn't look, read it directly. Okay. No, we haven't had a public hearing on that one yet. Okay. Thank you. No public comments and uh, no confirmation of appointments today. Okay. So let's continue to the legislative yeah, item. We're down to the consent agenda legislation, Mr. Chairman. Resolutions on second reading and final passage are which will require only one reading. Resolution 171 authorizes and providing for the waiver of permits, inspections, and other related fees for the construction of a house at 1613 Rock Springs Boulevard in Stone Lake Development. Uh, this is for the Home Builders Association for Community Renewal. There's $1,200 worth of fees that are being waived by the city. Resolution 172 accepts a donation from Shreveport Green, the Querbees Park Foundation of $100,000 to do tree, prim, uh, tree pruning and trimming at uh, Querbees Golf Course. 174 is for the certification of compliance with the state of Louisiana Off Systems Bridge Replacement Program. Resolution 175 findings and determines that, that a public hearing has been held and that no petition has been filed objecting to the proposed issuance of the City of Shreveport, State of Louisiana, of its water and sewer revenue bonds in an amount not to exceed $120 million authorized the officials of said city to proceed with the preparation of the documents required for the issuance of such bonds. Okay, and these uh, we have uh, had a chance to review, and but if there are any questions regarding these uh, resolutions that are the final reading and passage, is there any questions? Okay, again, I want to.
thank you in advance for your support of uh, the waiver of the fee for 171 for the House of Hope to be located in Stone Lake subdivision. I appreciate the, um, the estimate value of that of that waiver. Okay, we may continue. We're down to introduction of resolutions. There are none. Introduction of ordinances. These are introductions of ordinances for the 2017 fiscal year budget not to be adopted no later than December the 15th, 2016. Ordinance 100 adopts the 2017 capital projects budget fund. Ordinance 101 adopts the 2017 riverfront development fund budget. Ordinance 102 adopting the 2017 general fund budget. Ordinance 103 adopts the 2017 retained risk fund budget. Ordinance 104 adopts the 2017 MPC budget. Ordinance 105 adopts the 2017 Community Development Special Revenue Fund budget. Ordinance 106 adopts the 2017 Grant Special Revenue Fund budget. Ordinance 107 adopts the 2017 Shreveport Redevelopment Agency Special Revenue Fund budget. Ordinance 108 adopts the 2017 okay. Downtown Entertainment Economic Development Special Revenue Fund District uh, budget. Ordinance 109 adopts the 2017 Golf Enterprise Fund budget. Ordinance 110 adopts the 2017 Air Airport Enterprise Fund budget. Ordinance 111 adopts the 2017 Water and Sewerage Fund Budget. Ordinance 112 adopts the 2017 uh, Budget Funding Contractual Services provided by Sportran by Metro Management Associates Incorporated. Ordinance 113 adopts the 2017 Downtown Parking Enterprise Fund Budget. Ordinance 114 adopts the 2017 Convention Center Enterprise Fund Budget. Ordinance 115 adopts the 2017 Convention Center Hotel Enterprise Fund Budget. Ordinance 116 adopts the 2017 Debt Service Fund Budget. Ordinance 117 adopts the 2017 Street Special Revenue Fund Budget. And Ordinance 118 adopts the 2017 Solid Waste Fund Budget. Okay, well. And if I could make a comment, Mr. Chairman. You may. Uh, as you know, these are introductions. Yes. Uh, tomorrow, we will do the overview. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Jones. Sharika right. Fields Jones will be doing that, and um, we will uh, be in a position to start uh, answering questions, however, more so in depth at the individual budget uh, sessions, sessions mm -hmm. that, we, that we have set. So we want to make sure that you are aware that we're going to do the overview tomorrow, and then uh, we'll get into the details when we have those sessions. But in the interim, You'll be yes. available to answer questions. Yes, sir. We will. Okay. Yeah. All right. Council members, we have been presented <coughs> with the 2017 budget of the City of Shreveport. We'll be uh, perusing them and, and getting reviewing them and getting details and be prepared between now and the 29 and 30, which we will have our sessions. Uh, to to uh, scrutinize them and be prepared to inquire any anything that we're not clear on through the mayor's office, and then hopefully after we have our sessions, then we would then have additional time uh, to look at how we uh, would like to uh, do what we do. Hopefully, we can be very uh, prudent and, and, and very fair and, and, and looking at the city as we are obligated to do mm -hmm. in making uh, <laughs> making choices and making determinations on how the ability of this city as we move forward. So thank you and we'll look forward to Ms. Jones tomorrow, Mayor. Uh, any questions from any council members? You may continue. Mr. Chairman, we're on ordinances on second reading and final passage. Ordinance 93 authorizes the Shreveport Airport Authority to dispose of property located in the 5500 block of Greenwood Road described here in a surplus property. Ordinance 94 authorizes the mayor to execute a lease city owned property to Planet Aqua Group. Ordinance 95, 2016 General Revenue Bond Ordinance, an amendment and restatement of the General Revenue Bond Ordinance authorizing the issuance from time to time of water and sewage revenue bonds for the City of Shreveport, State of Louisiana, prescribing the form to certain terms and conditions of said bonds, establishing funds and accounts relating to said bonds, providing for the payment thereof in principal and interest, including a rate covenant relating thereto, providing with respect to the issuance of senior lien bonds and junior lien bonds. Ordinance 96 is a series ordinance number one under 2016 general revenue bond ordinances 
a series ordinance pursuant to the 2016 general revenue bond ordinance authorizing the issuance of not exceeding 100 million principal amount of water and sewage revenue bond series 2016b and not exceeding 20 million principal amounts of taxable water and sewage revenue bonds junior lien series 2016c for the city of shreveport state of louisiana is provided in a notice of intent given by resolution number 152 of 2016 adopted on august the 9th 2016 establishing certain details of such bonds as required by the 2016 general revenue bond ordinance approving and confirming the sale of such bonds to a group of underwriters led by Seaburg, Concerno, Shank and Company LLC pledging the net revenues of the city's combined water and sewer systems to secure such bonds, prescribing the form and certain terms and conditions of said bonds. Ordinance 97 amends the 2016 capital improvements budget and otherwise providing with respect thereto. This is uh, two issues where we're uh, improving capital improvements. One of those is for sanitary sewer assessments of $20 million in a phase one project. The other is for landscaping on I-49 we're adding 149,300,000 to a project there. Ordinance 98 is a zoning case C-71-16 amending chapter 106 of the Code of Ordinances the City of Shreveport zoning ordinances by amending the PUD agreement attached to property located in the southwest corner of LLB Road and Fluent on Lucas Road, Shreveport, Cattle Parish, Louisiana. Zone B2 PUD neighborhood business plan unit development district with preliminary site plan approval. And Ordinance 99, this is a zoning case as well, C-73-16 amends Chapter 106 of the Code of Ordinances, the City of Freeport Zoning Ordinance, which is by rezoning property bound by Hearn, Westover, Bibb, and adjacent alley immediately west, Shreveport, Cattle Parish, Louisiana, from R1D, Urban One Family Resident, to B1 Buffer Business District. Okay. And we have, uh, again, had opportunity to review these uh, ordinances uh, previously. Uh, so, uh, I know that Mr. Whitehead is here, and if I have any questions for him, we'll deal with those. But in the meantime, I have to, uh, on the board, Council Okay. Um, so, really, this is a little bit, and we're backtracking a lot on the aquarium. So, But I, I want to get my, my messaging clear, both in my memory and being able to be responding to people that ask me questions. Okay, and I think Shelly's the right person to come up for this question because it really has to do with the 1.5 million in GOB. Mm -hmm. And the question stems from, so we were required, I don't know what year um, we were notified roughly when we were told we had to be in compliance with ADA agreements. Art, do you happen to know roughly when that was? No. I mean, it was before our time on the council yeah, there because long, I... There were a long list of things, but I don't remember the date. I mean, and I don't need the specifics, but just conceptually the timeline. It was 2005. 2005, the... That we, that they first came and started the audit on our buildings, sidewalks, bus service, everything. And who, who did that? That was... Department of Justice, I mean, no. The Department of Justice. Department of Justice starts with it and says, 2005, we are need to be compliant in the following things. Yes. And obviously, we go through a lot of facilities. I mean, <coughs> Barnwell being one of, I mean, Riverview. 136. 136 mm -hmm. buildings. Not only buildings, but remember, they looked at sidewalks. They looked at bus stops. I mean, it was a whole litany of city services. Not only our buildings we owned, but buildings that had city programming in it. So we didn't have to own the building, but so there were those types of facilities too. Gotcha. Okay, I apologize if this is a little pedantic, but you're going to see the reason. But I want to explain. They say, oh, well, no, the Department of Justice is not requiring us to do ADA compliance for the aquarium. It's a requirement well before the aquarium is. Okay. And so, obviously, we approve it in 2011, and um, where you've been, you know, the last three or four years, obviously, we know what we were going to try and decide what to do with it and what the appropriate use was. Now, if we never did anything with that building ever again, and we just let it die, we wouldn't have to put the $1.5 million into it. Right. right, because then, and this may be a question really for Art, then we'd say, 
Hey, I know we listed this as something we were going to spend our bond money on, but it's no longer relevant. And we'd have to hold the hearing here again and say, instead of using it for the intended purpose, we're going to use it for something else, right? That's conceptually how S we did similar it. Similar process as to what we did with, um, there was a community center at one point that had some funding and time had passed and the need had changed and um, that amount of funding that was available was no longer enough to build a community center. So remember, we held some public hearings um, and then declared that project to be, um, I don't know if we declared it infeasible or if we declared that it was just not the intention of that, <coughs> that funding anymore. And then that funding was reallocated still to something in the same geographic well in the same, um, the same proposition proposition so. as it was originally stated so i mean if it was stated that it was going to go to public recreation it needed to stay in public recreation okay and was that, was that the elvis presley no well part of the funding i think did go to elvis presley but uh, or no that was street funds that went to elvis presley uh, that Actually, funding ta and tax credits went to um went to uh part of it went to cc antoine and um the other okay, part i, I think remember. was held in reserve for another public recreation project in that area um and then maybe a little bit went to the Con cemetery mm -hmm. um and uh and then another similar example of that was uh mike uh, just reminded me remember when we had the murphy street bridge project uh was one of our original projects we were able to find a, an alternate financing source for that uh, the state ended up paying for that so same thing that money those monies were reallocated to other street projects um, you know but they were um, you know we had to have the hearing to declare that those monies would not be used for the Murphy Street Bridge project okay. we're moving it to a different proposition we have to go before the voters again yeah well I I'm not even sure exactly what the process would be we, we never entertained that because we certainly still have need within each proposition, so I mean, there wasn't uh, there wasn't a need to drastically change the categorization of the yeah. money. I mean, there's there's always a need in each proposition line. So, and, and I'm just trying to, you know, kind of go back through the process so people understand how we actually got here with this 11, I mean, the 1.5 million dollars, and because I am being asked questions, Absolutely. and I'm pretty sure I know how to answer them, but I'd like to answer them truthfully if we I can. So. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, and so in our, you know, the uh, 1.5 million goes to repurpose the building in our, quote, white box. Is that our term? What are we using? Yes, the white box. White box? Mm -hmm. Because that money is going to be invested. If we're going to repurpose that building for anything, we're going to have to invest that 1.5 million into it to make it ADA compliant. That was Not a promise, isn't that, isn't, that what, isn't that what we promised? I mean, didn't the past, the previous council promise to do that with the 2011 bond money? Well, I think the way it was phrased on the no. on the ballot is what the money had to be used for, you know, the project that was expressed. Um, not necessarily the, on the ballot, but yeah, in the, the proposition it, didn't say that. We yeah. had a, a list of projects list of that we adopted, adopted. And it said ADA compliant, compliant roof and other needed projects. I do want to say this originally just so that you can answer it all truthfully mm -hmm. we originally asked for three million dollars we knew that there was no way to repurpose that building at one point I mean but when the bond committee met they were trying to figure out enough money to get enough money to streets and other places so they cut that original our original request for borrowing was three million they cut it to 1.5 million so that's where we got that number that's where that you know how that number got down to 1.5 we then hired a consultant who went in and looked at the building, did a report, and that report generated about $3.7 million worth of needs to get it back to a usable condition. And had we, we had to have a partner to get there. There would have been no way for the city, unless we just put more money into the barn well, we needed to find, and we were charged by this administration to find the highest and best use for that building with the money we had so meant we needed a partner and we're lucky to where we are today because i think what you're going to see is our money is going to do what needs to be done anyway um all the demolition that we're doing there's asbestos outdated plumbing outdated hvac and then to meet ada other code compliance such as plumbing code we don't meet that there now we couldn't get to that number without a partner get to a number to make that building usable again 
Okay. Okay, and uh, I think that's, that's what I need. Okay. And by the way, I, I want to make clear, I, I'm not, not supporting, I'm in total support of this. I'm just making sure I have my facts stated. Okay. People ask. Those who are not in support. With um, the same question. And if, if I've got a copy of the 2011 ordinance, if you don't have it, which specifies exactly what the council adopted for renovations and ADA compliance, I'd be glad to share it with you. That you can share it with somebody else. That'd be great. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll give it to you forwardly. So, okay. okay. So let me, and at, for Council McCormick's on it, but let me ask you before you leave. Uh, I want to be clear that the, the the building was not put into renovation as a condition of an aqua coming. I want to answer that as, as truthfully to you, too. We did not, we have been looking for a reason to renovate the building and looking for someone to partner with us. We've talked to restauranteurs. We had talked to other agencies. We had talked to people who just wanted to turn it into an office building. And we kept thinking there's got to be a better use for the building than an office space. And, but yet we don't have enough money to get it there. When Mr. Whitehead first came to see us and said, I have this idea, it became a reason to get the building ready for an occupant. Otherwise, it might still be sitting there because we didn't have anybody else coming to the table saying, let me, let me make up that balance and let me make it up with something that will draw tourists, you know, will have an economic impact on our community until he came along. Although I, will say that, Aqua. although I will say that, you know, we certainly made the um, decisions to um, uh, to move forward with the project um, in a way that was suitable for any new tenant and without knowledge at that point of who the tenant was. I mean, the, you know, because the council approved the moving forward of the... Yeah, um, back in January. At the yeah, but we didn't at that point know who the proposed tenant That's was absolutely. or anything about who was there. We just knew that the administration was comfortable with the fact that there was uh, an interested partner there. Um, and, you know, so the improvements that were done were not done specifically for or, or in a way that, um, you know, they're, they're, Planet Aqua will be doing the improvements that make it an aquarium. We were just doing improvements to the building that make, make it, it marketable. marketable, make it usable. And that's what we kept hearing with everybody that would come see it. They would say, "There's just, it was just too overwhelming. It's too big. It's too much." We wanted to make it look attractive to to any to tenant. Any tenant, right? Councilman Corbin, well, yield to the mayor. She had her hand. Well, the mayor. Well, I mean, you know, you're, no, it's your ahead. meeting. I'll, I'll be glad to wait. Go ahead. No, I, I was gonna, you know, I was gonna say, when I, when this administration came aboard, there were projects in the 2011 bond proposal that uh, I felt needed some sense of urgency to complete, and that was one of those projects. And and I think I've said that from day one, even before I knew of Planet Aqua, sure. that we needed to complete and keep our commitments to the citizens from the 2011 bond money. And so we started doing projects. In fact, we did 38 of those projects last year because I felt like we needed to have a sense of urgency to try to build on what was already put in place, but to get it done. So I ask this staff to give me deadlines on every one of those projects, and that's what they did. They weren't comfortable at first, but they knew we had to move with a sense of urgency because I believe in getting things done. And I also said for the Bonwell Center, because I knew the, the, the cultural connections and the historic connections, we wanted to try to get a partner because we didn't have enough money to do everything. Shelly took me down there and we went through that building. We just didn't have the money. But I wanted to keep it, uh, I want to keep it um, so that it could be, it could complement the riverfront. And if we could get partners that could do that, if we could get a partner to do that, that would be perfect for us. Because we did have some other interested parties, but like she said, they wanted to make off space or they wanted to turn it into a restaurant. But trying to keep it with something that dealt with, you know, the same type of culture down there and something that would complement Cyport, we thought would be the best thing. And really, with the Planet Aqua Group, that was just a blessing in my opinion. And they were willing to do what we didn't have the money to do and it would still 
meet the same objective. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you for that, and I think you were right. Uh, it, was, it was a blessing and a great opportunity for us yes. to have that building available Absolutely. for that purpose. Okay, Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was actually going to talk about Ordinance 98, but I will chime in <laughs> on this one as well. Just, I, I appreciate Ms. Ragel's comments because um, Thank you. I think she explained it very well. At, you know, I know a little bit about that building from being involved with it in the past, and the amount of work that was needed was going to take somebody else coming in and, and doing some things to it. You know, a lot of times the, the public will ask, come to us and ask questions about you know, why did something close and why haven't you done something with it. And um, you know, I can tell you anybody firsthand about electrical issues and plumbing issues down there. And you know, if somebody had a big event with a wedding and you had 200 people trying to use the facilities, you had a big problem. And uh, so. I think we're on the right track with, with having a premier facility there. Um, on Ordinance 98, just a housekeeping thing, I think I mentioned this two weeks ago, that property is actually located on the northwest corner of LRV and Florida Lucas, not the southwest. Okay. We'll change that before tomorrow. All right. Are we, are we in agreement, uh, administration? Absolutely. The language mm -hmm. needs to be yeah. adjusted. Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. Councilman Jink. And that's not ours. I think that's. Uh, I think that's MPC. But is that? Yeah. Right? I mean, just just so when we when we vote on it, it has the right yes. right yes. description. I was just trying to ask Mark. Is that what is that what you all intended on that particular zoning uh, ordinance ninety eight? Yes. Yes. And now we're in agreement with that. I just want to make sure that you no, just that. want the language to be right, okay? I can assure you it's definitely on the northwest corner. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's not, there, is a, there is no confusion about that. Unless okay. something's happened in the last hour. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last time I drove, it was fairly, it would be hard to fix it, on yeah, well, Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we're in agreement. I just want to make sure that, because that one didn't come from, from my office, I just want to make sure that that was. Okay. 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 Right. Yes, sir. So my other question, and I'm on or Ordinance 96, and William, you probably know this. So is that always pro planned as 100 non-taxable and 20 taxable? That's how it was introduced, yes, sir. Even in the beginning? Yes, sir. And why is it that... I didn't see any of them in here this morning, but they're... Yeah, we've got the best way here. there. Oh, she's, hi she's hiding. No, okay. she's in the corner. She's not hiding. She's in the corner. <laughs> she's hiding with the bright pink shirt that I couldn't miss. If, uh, yeah. uh, so, and I don't know if I asked this before, and I apologize. The why was why is twenty of them of it taxable? The funding stream for um, <coughs> the hundred million required to be taxable under the. I believe it's LCDA rules and regulations, as well as um, the state requirements through the bond commission, because of the nature of the issuance as a revenue bond. But the hundred is non-taxable, right? Right, but they're senior lien bonds. The twenty million is the junior lien bond, which is for the purpose of satisfying swap termination, as well as uh, the cost of issuance. And since it's a swap termination, those are not munis, I guess. Correct. They're actually, I mean. By definition, from a tax standpoint. Correct. That's correct. I got you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you. Any other uh, questions regarding uh, second reading and passage on tomorrow? All right, Mr. Prophet. Uh, we're we in table legislation, and the administration is not aware of any table legislation coming off at this point. Okay. And then we're down to property standards and appeals, and I believe we have one from Mr. Green. On appeal. Yes, sir. All right. Only case for today is 4611 Monkhouse Drive. This is a bill dispute. And what you see here is basically a timeline of the weed abatement letter. 
that's the in, the work order that we give out to the contractor that only deals with one specific lot. This is the lot before. This is the lot after. Go back to the four again. I'm sorry. <coughs> so Monk House Drive. Okay, go ahead. It's an odd shaped lot. <coughs> and this is a correspondence between Ms. Moselle and our office and the council office. Now, Ms. Moselle was not available to come to council. She's in New Jersey. That's where she lives. Uh, she lives where? New Jersey. Okay. Uh, Franklin Park, New Jersey. And her mother, she sent her mother to represent the case, Miss Clara Vance. And Miss Vance, at this point, does not have all of the information that we have. And so I asked if it would be okay that we push this off another month. This is also a video. This is the inspector walking off the lot. Is this the lady who thinks we cut the wrong lot? Yes. Yes. Well, no, she's not saying that. Cut the wrong. That we cut too much. Cut too much. Charge her too much. Uh, when was this video done? Say again? When was this video made? This was when she filed for her appeal. Okay. This is in the presence of her contractor. So she's alleging that you've charged her too much because you cut more than you needed to cut? Right. That's correct. Okay. And you you feel comfortable that you it's accurate. Sir? Public standards is feeling that you are accurate and in, in the invoice. The invoice is accurate. We feel accurate, but she's asked for some time because she did send her mother, and her mother doesn't understand. And I said that I would take the time to sit down, go over all of the paperwork with her mother to show her um, because she wasn't given everything. So. Let me ask, Ms. Van, is, that, is that her there? Yes. That's the mother. Yeah. Can you come forward for a second? Well, I spoke to her outside. You, you, I spoke to her outside. You know, so I, so you, you know what she know? Mm -hmm. And she don't know enough. No. Okay. So we're trying to put them all on together on, on the same. On the same. The mom and her. How much are they alleging that we mowed more than we should? Ten <coughs> really? percent? It's, it's not that much, I don't think. Five um, percent? I go with maybe five. And we have come up with a better number. Right. Uh, we have come up with a better better number after we walked that lot off. But we didn't charge it for. No. For the no, 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 no. Each what? each invoice Only is for, for. It's four invoices. That particular lot. Oh, okay. <coughs> each invoice. What's the total of the, of the four invoices. So staff, make sure they don't charge it for Some stuff that. that wasn't hers. Right. right. Okay. Okay. The original bill was $476.62. The owner of that building that you saw in the video cut a buffer across the front and down the side where his building was. We deducted for that. It saved her $114.16 and brought the bill to $362.46. No move. I mean, no, that's what's okay. No, that's okay. Okay, that's the total. That's, that's, that's total one, bill. One invoice, right? That's one invoice. Times four. There are four invoices, correct? No, 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 no. Oh, this is, oh, that, this that's, is, this that's is one invoice. Combination of, the, of all the work. This is all the work. This, this is the bottom line figure. That's fees and everything. So let me just ask her. I, I know y'all. You spoke with the councilman and, and Mr. Green earlier, Ms. Vance. And uh, what, 
what, what, just briefly, what did your daughter ask you to do today? Um, what it was, um, her lot had been cut, and, and um, she wanted me, you know, bring the papers out here and let you all and see. And let them see the paper, because she feel like somebody else had already cut some of the part that they're claiming that the city cut. Right. Okay. Right. okay. And uh, the uh, Mr. Green, the director, is asking us to postpone this and, until we can get more clarity. And, I, and, and a councilman is making that request also. So we're gonna we're gonna vote to extend you a month to so that they can get together, talk to your daughter, and we be clear on 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 our yes uh, charge to your daughter. Make sure that we're not overcharging her. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you for coming down. And she said also she didn't get the letter. I'm sorry. She said she didn't get no letter. She didn't get a letter. She's no. okay. She's contesting that she did not get a letter. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna give you uh, okay. extra time. Yeah. And they're gonna get with you and they're gonna make it clear on the process. Make sure she gets a letter. Yes. Stating the findings of the department. Okay. And then in a in a month's time we will come back and we'll make a determination on your on that obligation, okay? Oh, right. Right. Yes. yes, sir. My recollection is that we talked to her and after we got the appeal and told her that we were going to put it on the agenda. And whether she got the letter or not, I, I don't know, but could we tell her the date that it's going to be heard again? So yes, that yes. That, know Mr. That? Clerk, you, 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 have we defined the date a month from now? She didn't have to come if she agrees. meet in November. <laughs> What's, what's the date? November 7th. November the 7th. Okay. Let Monday? your daughter know that we will, we, will, we will be reconsidering this on November the 7th. We're going to postpone it and reconsider it. Now, if, if for instance, <clears throat> that within the discussion between you and the councilman and Mr. Green and your daughter, that she feel like that is accurate and right, then she can go ahead and pay it and we can, we can go ahead and dismiss it. But, but, in, but if you want to... If she continues to dispute it, then just come back on the 7th at uh, 3 o'clock, and we will take it up with the, from the council. On. Okay, November 7th, okay? But you'll get, she'll be getting another letter, but I just wanted you to make that make note of that date right, while you're November here. 7th. Okay? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for coming yeah. down. Thank you. I'll okay. Too. Now, I would entertain a motion for what's postponement the, for a month. What's the, what's, what, what's the amount for the three? Three sixty-two forty-six. Exactly. That's what she's disputing. Okay. Princess, have we had this lot before us before, or is it another property that, that Miss no, Sell owns? She owns other properties, but we've never had this. I knew that name was familiar. Okay. All right, Miss. So we can postpone to the to the seventh of uh, November. Of November. You, you, but I'm saying, okay. Okay. I was trying to get some understanding over here when I was making sure. Can we just? go ahead and approve the 362 well but and but, if she has a dispute with that after the fact then we go ahead but other than that just well, go ahead along with the 362. i'm so, saying we so do so that then have we, to have come to, back. we have to we have to we would have to i mean according to what 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 she we would find in that we would have to reimburse but i think i think it would be i think it would be wise for us to just postpone it because something may come up in the interim, she may want to send a survey out and look at it again. If, I don't know, but if I, she if she disagrees with that latest number, I mean, if she agrees with that latest number and pays it, then it's yeah. it goes away yeah. anyway. Okay. She doesn't have to cut. That's that. what I, that, that was my question. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, in the, in the interim of postponement, she can pay it any time. Okay. All right. So, okay. I, I move for a postponement to November seventh. Second. Move by the chair, seconded by Councilman Bowman, that we was postpone this. Uh, until the seventh of November. Okay. Any questions? Okay, we, let's vote. Mr. Everson, can you get a hand? I think I, I think I clicked it. Yeah, I clicked he, it. yes. Yeah. 
So it's it's um, five, it's five five to zero. Uh, two is absent today. Okay. Just let her know uh, again the date and, and what we would. Uh, we have a one one thirty appointment tomorrow. With her. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Again, I mean, yes, sir. If she if you can make it clear to her what 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 transpired then, and her daughter agrees to pay it, then let us know and we'll. I mean, let us know tomorrow. Yeah. So one thirty we meet at three. So let us know and we'll. We'll, we'll dismiss it. Okay. Okay. Any other? That's it. Okay. Thank you. All right. We have a down to uh, reports from boards and committees. Uh, any? Reports from any officers, boards, or committee chairs. I will say that, uh, Mayor, we 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 uh, we did have a follow-up meeting from for the chamber committee, and uh, Ms. Crawford was present as well as uh, Ms. Rago and Commissioner Commissioner uh, Commissioners as well as their uh, assistant administrator. So, and we we. Uh, have uh, referred our recommendations to to the proper agencies, entities, and hopefully we can look at a timeline and getting those things done. I think I think we agreed that we need to upgrade security here as well as our technology. Okay. And Ms. Crawford mentioned that uh, there has been some provisions made in budget already for yes, sir. one sector of it. Yes, sir. And uh, hopefully we can look at how we, if, if we go with the uh, security issue, then he suggested that we make an amend something to make that money available also. Okay. okay. Yeah, may I ask a question? Have we had a chance to talk with uh, Chef Preeta? Because well, the he's process that we determined that, that we met and we uh, expressed the desires of the, both the commission and the council. Yes, sir. And now we directed Ms. Regal and Mr. Crawford to now uh, go to meet with the sheriff and, okay. and, and let him okay. know what the wishes of these bodies are and get his input yes sir and then we if there are some changes then they would they would come back to to the committee sounds good thank you thank you Mr. thank you um i just wanted to provide an update on the master plan um committee we did meet uh on friday and um discussed a number of items one of them was uh I think everyone should have received a printed out copy of the neighborhood associations that are in your district with contact information on them. Um, if you have an opportunity to before tomorrow, um, if you could fill that out, if you know those to be different than what's on that sheet, or if you know of organizations that may have been omitted from that sheet, uh, if you can fill that out. Um, if you don't get it by, to us by tomorrow, it's not the end of the world. but. Um, the sooner we can get those, the sooner we can work towards um, kind of re-engaging uh, the Council of Neighborhoods, which is something that has come up in several public meetings lately. There is a desire from a number of these neighborhood associations um, to start working with each other uh, in, on common issues that they have. So um, anyway, we had some other updates about that. We had some updates about uh, the Unified Development Code. One thing that I do want to let this body know um, certainly the MPC has another public hearing on the Unified Development Code. Once they pass that, um, that will, um, you know, then come to us for consideration and the Cato Parish Commission for consideration. Um, now, in the event that edits are made to these, by these two different bodies, um, that document will then go to the Master Plan Committee as sort of a conference committee where they will look at the two different versions and make them match then send them back to the individual bodies for final consideration. So I want to make sure that everybody knows that's going on. Of course, the Cato Parish Commission has already <coughs> passed their budget for next year. We're about to be in the midst of uh, our busiest time of doing that. So we just want to make sure that everybody is comfortable knowing that if they move forward with it before we're ready to, that's okay. There's a process in place for that. Um, and also, let's see, we talked about one other... Um, we did review the short-term goals of the master plan, some notes that have been made on that. 
Um, and there are a number of things that I think can be done um, with some pretty short-term actions, uh, both by the city and some of our other partners in the community. Um, but one of the things that we thought that we would do is um, postpone any action or legislative push for that until um, after the adoption of the budget and um, and the consideration of the Unified Development Code. So we, we don't want to distract the focus on those two very large tasks ahead of us by lots of these little things. So there will be some of those that, um, that may come up later in the year. And to the administration, it may be a good idea when we have that meeting if y'all, I mean, I recognize that on that master plan committee, um, there are you know members of the city council, but there's not somebody directly from the administration. So if y'all do have somebody that you'd like um, to participate, that kind of meeting either at the very end of this year or beginning of next year would be a great time so that we can take a look at some of those and kind of review them with the administration to see what y'all think are easy easy boxes to check off and what's going to be a little more complicated you know because there's some of those goals that are clearly in line with what y'all are doing anyway mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of just kind of coordinating that okay. so sounds um, good so thank we appreciate you. appreciate that participation and it was a productive meeting thank you thank you Councilman Nelson for that update uh, we're getting close. I attended the public hearing uh, last week, actually. And, and then I met individually with Mr. Sweeney. Uh, and I'm suggesting, again, in council members that have any, any part of it that they're not comfortable with or need further uh, clarification on that, that you meet with him. I'm, I'm still concerned. I expressed it to him uh, that we of creating a document that is considered one, one size fit all and within the zoning aspect of it there are some opportunities but, but when we look at some of the codes that Baltimore, Southern Hills, you know, uh, Long Lake or uh, LRB Road Estates are, you know, we're holding MLK, Allendale, more town to the same type of standard. I just, I just was hoping that we can look at some way that we can customize some of these that will sort of be fair to those more, more inner city impoverished communities. But that's something that we're going to continue to talk about and discuss. Some of the, some of the some of the expectations of, 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 of building development and things like that is what I'm concerned about in, in allowing some of these residential areas to be able to uh, diverse their structures that they within the range of which they can afford because there's a very large disparity in in, in the ability of, of our citizens so that was my big issue with, with that Okay. Um, any other reports from any any, any uh, council members? If not, the, okay. I'm sorry. We have one request for engineering. Okay, Mr. I'd Eric. like to know when we're starting on Ackard Street and the Knight Street projects. And while you're coming down, tell us when that. Uh, you drive uh, Kings Highway Interchange going to relieve, give us a relief. Councilman, we're getting ready to bid Ackard Street for those improvements. Knight Street, I'm waiting a little bit longer for them to clean up some of the uh, traffic congestion on Shreveport Parksdale Highway before we actually start Knight Street. Okay, and the Ackard Street project I thought we got our engineering design back like in the beginning of the summer. The consultant had a flat street. In other words, the street was put in at about a 0.12 original grade of the street, which is very flat and you can't drain it. So we went back and modified the grades and added some additional drainage so we could make sure that the street has good drainage. That sounds smart. And is there any coordination to replace some of the existing so we're going to replace some of the drainage yes sir. and then what about the water mains uh underneath the street at each of the intersections where we have crossings 
we are putting in new water and sewer systems at those crossings so that uh, later on down the line as we look at addressing the water and sewer needs in that area we don't have to go in and rip up the street where we've recently made improvements okay thank you and, and uh, so when do you think is the Knight Street project it's been engineered or it has it? it has been engineered and, and it is ready for construction but again we don't want to create too much of a Understood. barrel race problem for the citizens in that particular area of town okay and do we already have a contractor to do the work on Knight Street no sir we have not advertised we it haven't yet. advertised okay That's correct thank you what, if, what about on uh, where I know I ask you this like every two weeks but where are we on Oakdale on Oakdale it is another one that we're putting out for bids okay so it is it is going out in the next round or yes sir okay. it is thank you you know, I, I know that your is not a city. city no, sir. Street, it is being worked. It's being looked after by the state. Are you? Do they? Do they communicate with you as far as anything regarding timelines of what when this construction would be? We do stay in close concert with the state. We talk to them on a regular basis on what their schedule is. Uh, we do coordinate a lot of work with them with regards to water and sewer facilities, as far as that work is concerned, as well as traffic signal systems. Do they do they do they say anything about <clears throat> uh, inquire about any 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 of those state or federal highways that come through the city? For instance, Greenwood Road. Do they do they ask you or uh, inquire? You know, are these uh, can you recommend something to them? Yes, sir. I can certainly recommend things. I do understand that they are looking at Greenwood Road for resurfacing of that particular road uh, in the it, it, coming up very soon. Yeah, I thought they actually had the funds allocated yes. for that already. For this year. And it was, yeah, that's, it. that's happening. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, there's a section of 173 between Common Street and McNeil that is horrible in Jeff, De Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Everson's district. 173. Uh, that's actually uh, Kettle. Yeah. Kettle Ford. Okay. <laughs> I can't remember if that's going up I don't think that's scheduled yet. It's nothing to schedule it as of yet. Yeah. But uh, yes, I have but pointed it state, out to them that they do need to do state, not local, right? Yes, sir, that is state yeah. highway. Okay. All right, well, uh, I'm glad to know that you can make suggestions, and, and uh, I'm glad to hear that, that Greenwood is, is being, is being Absolutely. funded. So. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll look at some other state roads. We're going to be consistent because we're going to make some hay next next year. Is that right, Mayor? Say yes. yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say yes until I hear the question. I, I said, I, said I, I was going to inquire that the state keep up because we're going to make some hay next year and fix up some streets. Well, we, we made hay last year and we're making some this year. Okay, I'm, we're going to give you an update, okay, all on right. all of the streets that we've done. We, we've done 50 streets through the 2015 street plan and this year we've done how many more we're doing a grand total of about 80 hopefully this year uh, we've already completed about 20 no 35 of them right already in this calendar year yes sir and we're currently working on several more right now so we are making hay uh, you can ask the citizens and they, they've been doing all over the all over the city but I, I wanted to make one comment. Yes. Uh, we push the state on those state streets, highways that come through our city. That's why the Greenwood Road thing is being done, because we've been pushing them. We say to them, because we get the calls, too. Mm -hmm. And so we try to say to the state, um, you know, can you look at this? Can you look at that? And I've been told a couple of times, I mean, Tyler, we just did the Murphy Street overpass for you. <laughs> and that cost us several million. And that saved the city. And I said, and we thank you. But we, we, we're still pushing for those others. Just know that. Yeah. We're not sitting back because we know they come through our city. Thank you, Mayor. And I, and I appreciate that because the citizens don't always know that Absolutely. that's a state road. They think that we're I know. negligent. And, and, that, and that's the big issue uh, uh, response I was getting from the, uh, uh, from the uh, Bornwell. I mean, not, not repurposed, but the fact that we put money into renovating it. And they're like, why, why wouldn't y'all put that money in the streets? Mm -hmm. You know, but we yes, made it way. clear that we couldn't repurpose it for, <laughs> for, for something else. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
Did you ever get any, and I may have asked you this before, I made a request to actually look at the state in regards to the Monkhouse Drive, Greenwood Road intersection where you yield going to Jefferson, going down to uh, Jefferson Page Road, where, the, where this gentleman had this trucking company and it was a yield sign and his truck come out and sometimes they don't see the guys and, and I was wondering could they put a stop sign there instead of a yield sign. I've asked Jim Oye, who is the state uh, district four traffic engineer to look yes. into that. I have not heard a response from him, but I'll be glad to check up on it. If you will. It. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Any other questions for Mr. Okay. Mr. Westman, thank you. Thank you. May we we down to additional communication. Do you have any? None. Thank you, sir. Okay. Council members. Uh, I, I will be remiss, Mayor, if I didn't uh, express my appreciation for you for coming into my district on National Night Out. Uh, and given the remarks that you gave to some of the citizens, I think it was a very healthy night. Uh, people are expecting us, but it gets dark too quick. I, I know. Yeah. We made, I made four. I don't know how many you made, but. Uh, well, we made about five. Busy. I mean, you know, we started, we kicked off in, in uh, Councilman Jenkins' district, right. and then we went on over to, was it Councilman Everson in South Highlands? Is that that was Jenkins as well. It's not far from mine though, not but it's very. Okay. Uh, I think I think they were um, over at uh, Oakley? Carolyn Gonzalez's yes. um, block. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, down in there. That's Oakley? No, uh, she's over in. Um, it's uh, it's over by Oakley Richmond. and Richmond. Yeah. Richmond. Yeah. And so, not far from, not far from your homestead. <laughs> Yeah, because that one didn't show on my. No, oh, it was new. It was like it, it didn't even make Absolutely. it on the list. It, it was didn't so make it on the list. Oh, because I didn't step by. Them. That's what they told you. <laughs> <laughs> we, and, you know, funny enough, I, I'm I'm not a very good reader anymore. But I went to my on the list, and of course the AC steer kickoff thing I didn't see because it wasn't didn't say C what next to it. <laughs> I'm not very worried. Right, you didn't lay in a way because I was late. You've been busy. Yeah, you know, right, I'm not, I'm not saying a, it was. We did a press release <laughs> and the council got Y'all did your part of the deal. I'm, I'm pointing out that I'm. Oh, no, no, you've been busy. Yeah, I'm a little derelict in honor. It, it is always tough to make it around us. It might get a, a ride with the CLO, and I'm like, that is a good that strategy. Yeah. I need yes, to do it that. Is. Okay. It is. Um, it is tough. I, I went to one at, um, I was saying the first two I went to was, one was in uh, Paradise Church, which is on Hollywood, and the second one was in Stoner Hill on the other side of the Uri King's construction. Mm -hmm. Just going between those two mm -hmm. took about 30 minutes, you know, I mean, that's a, that's, you get a, you, you realize how big your districts are on that Absolutely. night. Absolutely. You know? can, can you imagine what they expect me to do with all, I know. <laughs> and we had, actually, that was reported to us, we had like 81 uh, block neighborhoods, block, block parties, okay. but we ended up with more because some of them didn't register. We call them 81 legal because yeah. they told us about them. But we were excited to have more even that reported to us and even more that didn't report because it meant that we've got more people engaged now in the community than ever before, particularly in trying to um, do the communications with our uh, first responders. Uh, and so that was a good thing. We ran into Sheriff Prater at, at one or two of those and, um, you know, all of our fire people and all of our uh, police officers. And it was very, very engaging in Shreveport, I can tell you, and in Cattle Parish. Did, did you get any, uh, Mayor? Uh, yes, I, I knew you, you was promoting the 22nd event. Yes, sir. Uh, did we get any uh, response to those? Uh, oh, yes. I mean, we've got a lot of people now that want to, I don't know how many booths we got to set up out there oh, now. Was, okay. A lot of, how many, 40? I said it wrong, but I, I knew you were wrong. How many? I'll clarify. Okay. 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 Yeah, we got 20 no, people who've committed to set up booths out there. Wow, okay. And uh, so the response has been excellent. Uh, I don't think you made the last meeting last week. No, I didn't. We got another one scheduled for this week. Oh, did we do? I hadn't gotten that email yeah, yet. Hey, I'll check out the email read the email. <laughs> <laughs> but we got another one scheduled for this week. We meet every week now with the big group. Okay. And then they do their uh, meetings with the subgroups by yeah. breakout sessions. Right. But the, you know, the response has been very, very good. And we're looking for up to 500 people. Wonderful. 
Yeah. yeah. So, and we're going to be pushing that. We've done some PSAs, by the way. So yeah, those should be coming out on TV pretty soon, free of charge. Okay. And, I saw the one uh, on your Facebook page. Yeah, we got we got there too, but we the TV <laughs> all three TV coming. stations bought into it. So they they did a PSA with all of the law enforcement agencies standing um, united good. against crime and violence. So that's going to be a good thing for us. All righty, that's, that's all good. I'm really trusting and hoping that 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 we are good residents and citizens yes. to come out to that's engage the best us whole in, idea. That, in that conversation. <laughs> All righty. Any other uh, council members have any communications or comments? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, State Attorney. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I want to clarify something I said earlier on the uh, on the water and sewer bonds. I interposed my terminology. The 20 million is the taxable portion. The 100 million is the non-taxable. The 20 million is yes, taxable. Okay, that's that sounds better. Just wanted to clarify that since it is on the record. Thank you. That that's important to clarify that. We didn't want to take out uh, uh, the wrong, wrong information. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, the clerk, you have any report? Not today, Mr. Chairman. Oh, right, thank you. All right. Is there any other business need to come before the body? Seeing none. Meeting is adjourned. They might have to give a little money back on the paycheck this week. <laughs> Feel like you. Know, it's not getting enough time out of me. <laughs>